uh, having been raised at certain uh, points in my childhood in poverty and the belief systems that I developed during that time, you know, things like I'm not worthy of the money or rich people are greedy, uh, money is the root of all evil. Ooh, that was a big one. <laughs> yeah. You know, and and it's not that our environment as children is bad or, or good. There's no label there. It's just that we pick up belief systems based on our experiences and what's modeled around us. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good way to say it, that oftentimes it's neither bad nor good. Sometimes I would venture to say it's less optimal than others. But that essentially a lot of what we're just absorbing is inherited material. And as we evolve, what we hope for ourselves is that we'll begin to question if these inherited beliefs, like let's say money is the root of all evil or rich people are greedy or I'm not worthy, if they really are in alignment with who we are, what we value, and and what we hold dear in the world. Absolutely. And when I started to really look at those and make, it was a, it's a very conscious journey because our belief systems pop up on a subconscious level. Uh, and if we're not in that awareness, it's really hard to find them. Right. <laughs> but, you know, through that process there, I was actually able to look at them and see also how they don't apply to me anymore. You know, I'm not that that small child who's dependent on my parents and, you know, what's happening in the world at that time, that's not me anymore. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to be able to release that and open to a possibility that uh, I am worthy of abundance, that I deserve it. Yeah. Just even, I mean, hopefully at this point you own that, that you viscerally believe this, but just the moment you even open up to the possibility, like, well, just what if I deserve it? You know, what if I just insert a little doubt into this idea that that can happen for others, but it's not meant to happen for me? That alone begins to let a little fresh air and change in, doesn't it? Absolutely. And one of the fundamental ideas that I was introduced at this workshop was about your roots and your fruits and how this internal world about money are really the roots and your external world, the manifestation of what you have, are the fruits from the tree. Mm -hmm. Now, if I had bad roots, I obviously wasn't going to get good fruits, right? Yeah. Well, I didn't know what bad roots were. And um, through this course, I, I discovered that, you know, doing things to prove people wrong, uh, jealousy, uh, things like that, those were bad roots. Well, I was raised by one of the... <laughs> Bless you, Dad, if you're listening. Thank God you've changed so much. <laughs> I probably one of the most chauvinist pigs on the planet. He was, it was intense at times. <laughs> I, I walked a lot of my life proving to him and the world that a woman could do it. Right. Well, to the him in your head, right? To the... Absolutely. The five yeah. <laughs> Definitely. But when I learned that there were good roots, you know, what those good roots were from the loving and the the kindness and the just the joy of life, I actually consciously made that switch in my head immediately from doing things to prove people wrong or right, whatever it was, uh-huh. <laughs> to doing things for the pure love and joy of my family. And then how did that shift? I mean, if you can describe earlier when you were doing things, let's say, to prove, well, a woman can do this, look at me, versus when it just evolved from this place of pure love and joy for your family, can you give us a sense of how that looked different inside of yourself or in your life? Yes. Um, Well, from an inside myself standpoint, it actually opened up, and this is, I guess you could say a little out there, <laughs> opened up some doors in me 
to love of not just myself but the world around me in ways I never believed possible. I was a very bitter person. I spent my 20s very angry. (laughs) And to feel like I do just about men in general, to let go of the hatred and the anger I had, and to have one of the most loving relationships of anybody I know, (laughs) Uh, and, and just look at the world in a different space from love, it, it has changed everything in me. I'm not anxious anymore. I don't wake up with that deep pit of despair all the time um, and constantly worrying. <laughs> mm. So what that does just for my health, I mean, you could imagine. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, ultimately what we all seek is to feel happy, to feel loved, to feel um, safe on our basic needs at the very least in terms of money and home. And so what you're describing is through shifting my internal reality, I, I got what I most long for, happiness, a sense of love, a sense of worth, a sense of ease, and a, and a release of the bitterness and anger that was holding me back. Absolutely, and, and fulfillment on many levels. Now, prior to this shift, because I know some of your shifting began earlier around the weight, but this big pivotal moment in terms of going to this workshop around money, prior to this, were you able to experience all of the love that your husband must have been giving you way back then as well? You know, we've always made our relationship a priority and really focused on that dynamic, but there was always something holding us back. Because until you open to all aspects, I personally believe after my tenure, you know, we've been together 10 years so far. Um, When you open to all of the levels of the relationship financially, you know, um, health, just all levels, there becomes a deeper, more phenomenal connection than I can even describe. 